favorite memories of all of us hanging out and laughing around this desk. It feels like we've been doing this forever, doesn't it? Forever. Oh, good. Oh, 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 oh look at us. Oh, oh, my God. Good times. I know you can hardly pick me out. <laughs> you can. Know, like, black and white makes us all look white. <laughs> <laughs> and our trip down memory lane is just getting started. Today we're sharing our most delicious and all-time favorite food memories. That's what this You want one of what? I want with a picture of us all as babies. I know, that is, that's a cute picture. I'm going to frame and put it in my kitchen. I know. <laughs> okay, let's get it. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's talk a little bit about the weekend, because we uh, we didn't talk about that on yesterday's show, but we had a very memorable weekend. One week. Michael, you opened your new restaurant, Angeline. and did. The city. There you are, cutting the ribbon. There it is. That's me, Liz, and Doug, cutting the ribbon for the grand opening with uh, some of the fantastic people from the Borgata. It was, you know, it was so fun. I, I uh, you know, the restaurant business is... is there they are. Know, it's, Oh, they're meeting. Oh, yeah. yes. That's a great time. After that's, a few cocktails. That's Clint and I after several celebratory cocktails. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it's a lot of 18-hour days, and all, but it's so fun. I, I love the energy of opening a restaurant, watching a team come together, and the excitement of the staff and of the people coming in. It's just, it's always so special to me. It's well, I'll tell you something. The food was fantastic. I would expect nothing less. The space is gorgeous. Yeah. Liz did an amazing job there. And the party was really, really fun. It so was, thank you for fun. having us. No, it was fun. A bunch of a bunch of people from the show came down, which is obviously very flattering and fun to me. So I thank you all. Yay. Yeah. You're gonna kill it, Simon. Thanks, MB. What did you We're guys We're ready get up for to? your veal parm, baby. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? Uh, I was in Los Angeles. I was participating in something called Wasted about how to manage, deal with, and possibly fix uh, all the food that we waste in the United States. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. I was with Massimo Bottura, oh. and was led by Jonathan Gold, Roy Choi, Dominique Crenn, yeah. and Mary Sue Millican. And we had a really nice conversation in a beautiful theater at the Ace Hotel in LA. It was a really fun time. That's a great group. Yeah. Oh, okay. good. Hey. How about you, Carla? I, mean, I, I worked a little bit, but I, I also spent time doing a little something. I, you know, Mario, you've been giving me gifts like once a month for my Christmas gift. I have not finished knitting your <laughs> scarf. <laughs> <laughs> what I did, I gave you some of the chicken seasoning that we use at my restaurant. Okay. And the number six hot oil. Number six oil. For. Fantastic. So I decided that until I finish knitting, I'm going to give you something every month unless until the scarf comes. Oh. <laughs> looks, yeah. like, looks like you're getting yeah. some every month for the rest of your That's life. Right. <laughs> well, I... I appreciate these efforts, Carla, and we don't need a scarf all summer anyway, so the scarf can wait till the winter. Oh my God. Until exactly. next Christmas. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. All right, you guys, let's dig into some you on the chew tastings, all right? Evidently, we inspire people to cook, if you can imagine it. Um, Mike in Fresno, California says, my family always had big ziti at birthday parties and family get-togethers. When I saw Michael make big ziti recently, it brought me right back there and inspired me to make my version. So let's take oh, Mike's version. It does. Mike, you're doing a dang good job. Yeah. Uh, good, all right. Good job, buddy. Are they like whole wheat noodles? I like them. They're al dente for sure. Okay, and Lynn in Phoenix, Arizona, sent us the recipes from lemon coconut sugar cookies. And she wrote, I used to eat lemon cooler cookies from a box when I was a little girl, and now I make my own. One bite of these transports me back to childhood. So let's taste those. Anyway. I remember these as a child. Yeah. What's the bet on Simon's over and under? I'm going over on three. What do you think? <laughs> Cookie <laughs> oh, you're gonna love these. Mm. Really delicious, Lynn. Yeah. Way to go. A nice, little bit of crunchy, nice lemon tang. Really good. We're gonna send you each a copy of the Chew Approved. Thank you for sharing. Oh. So what are some of your favorite food memories, guys? I might go first because you're all chewing. Whenever I see a fried chicken cutlet, whether it's in a deli or something, I just go right back to being, uh, you know, at, at home with my family, eating around the dinner table. We were raised on fried, breaded chicken cutlets, and I feel like that always brings me back to family Homemade. Time. Homemade. Homemade. I do the same thing when I go to a deli and I see calves brain raviolis <laughs> with a spare rib ragu. I see him everywhere, and every time I yeah. see him, I think Grandma Leonetta at her house yeah. on a Sunday. There she is right there. That's me, my brother, my sister, my dad, and my grandma, who was perhaps one of the most influential cooks in our family. But everyone in that group. That is a great pick. Everyone, that was, pick, that was First Communion. Where do you think we're what? on our way to? Italy. No. The Space Needle in oh. Seattle, <laughs> where we had all of our celebration meals, because the restaurant spun hard. Right. Yeah. And you could have...
crab, Alaskan king crab eggs Benedict. Uh. That's another memory. <laughs> I have a question though about the calves brain yes. ravioli. So well, you were kids sure, at that delicious. point. Were, were the kids like, yay, grandma's making crabs brain again. Well, I'll tell you what. Once we taste them, because we just grew up with them, yeah. the, in the neighborhood, we were the strange people, right? <laughs> right, right like, right. oh, there's that lady that brings the calves brain. But once you tasted one, like when Don Christensen, whose family ate everything pretty much regular, like American grocery store food, he tasted one of those, he became a fan of Grandma Vitale. Yeah. And when Mike McGrady, same thing, when everyone got to taste them, all of a sudden they realized, hey, there's something to this stuff. So, like, they all figured yeah. it out. Like, with the old, like, ethnic traditions, a lot, like, we used to always do the lamb on the spit, and to watch my uncle split the head open, eat the brain, scared a lot of the Irish kids on our street. <laughs> you know, but it was like, that was normal to them, so it was yeah. delicious. Cabuzel. Yeah. Well, I want to tell you, one of my food memories, and I, and you know how you have these memories and you forgot about them until until something triggers Maybe you it. smell it one day or you right, see something, exactly. right? Yeah. Just last night, I was at the ribbon and I and the chef sent out this this thing that he was trying. It was simply a chocolate chip cookie with walnuts and it was crispy on the outside, soft on the inside, and vanilla ice cream it was two of them. I cut it in half shared it with the, my dining partner and as soon as I ate it I'm like oh my gosh this is the cookie that my godmother made Mrs. Pulley she would make these chocolate chip cookies and I was con I've been constantly chasing this cookie and trying to make the cookie and she is the reason I am fascinated and just fixated on making cookies I mean Mrs. Pulley thank you Aww. that's sweet I know. No, so did you get the recipe? I mean, or do you already know how to make it? I already know it how just to make reminded it, but you. it reminded me of why I am fixated with cookies, and it's because of her and her cookies that she would make for us. Well, That's fantastic. Yeah. We've got a show full of food memories today. What do you have coming up? Carl and I are making a mashup recipe you guys on social media requested. <laughs> Taking you along to one of my favorite memories, we're going to Baba's Pierogies with an adorable grandma. And get ready for some laughs because I'm cooking with the hilarious Wanda Sykes. <laughs> we'll be right back. Don't go away. Our next guest just so happens to be one of America's favorite comedians, and she is beyond hilarious in the highly anticipated new movie Snatched. Please welcome the one and only Wanda Sykes. <laughs> Welcome back, welcome back. So uh, how about kicking things off with a cocktail? I hear you like a margarita. Oh, yes. Shall we? Yes, we shall. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, that's a good one, too. Oh, that's good. That's oh, good, right? That's, that's, tri that's triple second. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's salt, too. <laughs> <laughs> so today's show is about food memories. And speaking of that, the last time you were here, we made a Halloween graveyard dip. I don't know if you remember this. Do you remember yes, this? Yes, okay. yes. It was very uh, kindergarten. It was very kindergarten. <laughs> you were busting my chops a little bit about how easy it was. So let's just remind everybody at home what happened. I just wanted to make some dip with you. I thought that would be okay. fun. Okay. All right. Have you ever made guacamole it's before? kind of easy here, but all right. <laughs> I mean, I, I wanted to play with a knife or something, I, you know? Well, guess what? You're going to play with knives. Yay! Just got to ask and you shall receive. Okay. Around. We're going to kick things up today with a mushroom and asparagus risotto. I'm mm. totally putting you to work. All right. Does that sound all right, all right to you? That's a lot of this. There's a lot of that's stirring. Okay. It's like a half an hour right. of stirring. I'm, I'm down. You're down with I'm it? I'm down. Before we get going, though, tell me about uh, how, you, how your twins are doing. Eight years old now? They're great. They're yeah? great. They're, uh, they're, they're wonderful. They're eight now. Uh, you know, mama's got to work because the, the teeth coming in on oh, the teeth. <laughs> yeah, it, their teeth, it, their, their mouth looks like Coachella. <laughs> It's like everybody just ran in. Just <laughs> <laughs> willy nilly going on in there. But I heard you use, speaking of teeth, I heard that you use sweets to sort of, you know, yes, to get them to do things. Yes, sweets. I mean, that's, that's the whole secret, you know, uh, saving the desserts. We control the desserts, and that's the only way we get them to do things. <laughs> They love ice cream. Ice cream, I can get them to do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's good parenting skills you got there. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's all I have. We right have a little now. sugar packet in that's their face. That's all I have. That's right all you now. got. No, it's good. Yeah, it's awesome. You got to do what you got to do. I get it. All right, so could you do me a favor and cut?
cut up, you wanted to use a knife so much, sure. can you cut up some of this asparagus? Sure. All right, while you're doing that, I'm over here, I'm gonna saute some spring onions and some olive oil. I have already sauteed up these delicious shiitake mushrooms over here. And you could take those asparagus and put uh -huh. them in here. All right. All right. Let's get that in there. You're working now. Uh, working now. No. Oh, this is what, oh, look at this. A little look at shovel. That. I didn't even see the shovel. Got a little shovel for look you. Look at that, look at that, look at awesome. that. Awesome, perfect. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now you can take that arborio rice that we've got over uh -huh. there and put it into this pan where the spring onions and olive oil are. Okay. And then I want you to stir it and toast it up a little bit. And while you're doing okay. that, you're gonna do all the work now on <laughs> Tell me, do you have any Mother's Day plans coming up? Oh, um, no big plans. You know, the, the kids, they usually yeah, get up and give us a, a nice homemade gift. Yeah. <laughs> um, something with yarn or macaroni. Uh, and then we, you know, pretend that it's the best gift ever. <laughs> and we go, oh, boy, let me take this Rolex watch off and put this, tie this string around my wrist. <laughs> and, there you go. This is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. All right. I'm going to add some white wine to that, and we sort of we cook that until it sort of evaporates. Oh, my we just gosh. Need the flavor of the white wine oh as well. Oh, boy. Um, I want to tell Ooh, you why we're doing wine. this. This okay. is one of my favorite food memories, this dish, because the first time I ever went to Italy, I was, I think, 19 years old, and I had risotto for... <laughs> why are you laughing? I'm adorable in that photo. That's, That's a my risotto <laughs> eating license. <laughs> My passport photo from Man. 1989 or something like you that. You look like you're one like day away from going on locked up abroad. <laughs> <laughs> you like, I was yeah, close to it. It was yeah, yeah. like, boy. Yeah. Um, but so that's why I wanted to share this with you in case you were wondering. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Thank did you, you. Do you remember your first trip abroad? Yes, yes, I do. Um, it was, uh, we went to, to, actually, it was going, I was going to Brazil. And, uh, and someone stole my passport. Yeah, the day before, like the day before, we were right, right here in New York City. Not me, New York. Love New York City. Nothing wrong with New York City. <laughs> but I was hanging out at a, at this lesbian bar, and it was just a few of us in there. And my wife was like, "Hey, keep at the time, girlfriend." She said, "Keep an eye on your purse." I was like, "Come on, it's, it's lesbians. We're family. <laughs> Nothing bad happens. We're good people." Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> Some of us have sticky fingers. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody stole my purse, and we and we kind of knew who it was and we ran out and chased them down the streets of New York City. I felt like I was on like a, like, you know, like police woman or something. Well, yeah. And uh, ran down to the subway, jumped the turnstile. Did you get it back? And, nope, she was on the train, <laughs> gone. So, Aww. Yeah, but it, it was all worked out. Like in two days, I, I was able to get like my uh, passport back and I had to go get a visa to get into Brazil. And But the funny thing was, um, I had to go to the post office to, to get an ID, whatever, to you know, passport thing, yeah. but I had to prove that I, you know, was who With I you, yeah, went, yeah. And, But I walk in and the woman goes, hey, Wanda Sykes. And I was like, yeah. I said, look, someone stole my purse and uh, I, I, I got to get a new passport. She goes, I'm going to need some ID. I was like, you just did it. <laughs> I was like, you just did it. <laughs> you are my ID. <laughs> All right, Juan, we're going to keep stirring for the next half an hour, adding All little right. bits of chicken stock by little until it keeps getting absorbed and evaporates. Don't go away. You're going to want to see how this turns out. After the break. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. That was the hilarious Wanda Sykes <laughs> in the new movie, Snatched. It's going to be a big one. We are just finishing up our mushroom and asparagus risotto. Mm -hmm. During the break, you were stirring so hard that you actually had to fan yourself yes, down. Yes, I the did. I had, I had to fan myself off a little bit. You know, a woman of a certain age. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful around here. When you ask to work, you know, you, yeah, you get put you, to work. You, yeah, I see that. All right. <laughs> a little bit more. Give me a nice, like, a good tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons of butter. Okay, I'm going to finish right this risotto there. off while you're putting that in. I'm also going to fold in right these here. mushrooms. Right in yeah, that's great. All right. Mushrooms and the asparagus. As as well, Ooh. and you're gonna give that a stir for me too. Oh, stir! Stir it, and we're gonna right. finish it off with lots of Parmesan cheese. Yes, cheese it up, cheese it up, cheese it up. So this movie, mm. Snatch, it's you, it's Goldie mm -hmm. Hawn, it's Amy Schumer, it's Joan Cusack. I mean, that is a that is an all-star cast of really, really funny women. It's all, it's almost too much. 
comedy in that movie, really. You really? think about it. And we're giving you too much. But, uh, yeah, it was so much fun doing it. You know, we shot in, um, shot in Hawaii. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. That's, That's cool. like a big going on vacation. It work. was. Actually, I almost got fired a couple times because I would wake up in the morning like, ooh, I should go ooh. learn how to paddleboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and they're waiting for me downstairs on sets. So I was like, uh-oh. How were you at paddleboarding? Did you actually try it? N no. No, I you're did. afraid of getting because, fired. Th yeah, I was afraid of getting fired. Well, how did you guys, I mean, with all that funny on the set at one time, like, did, were there times that you couldn't even keep a straight face? Like, my, sometimes, sometimes my favorite thing is, like, looking at the outtakes when the, when the cast is just, like, right. absolutely busted. And up. Did yeah. you have any of those moments? Oh, several of those moments. Several of those moments. Um, Amy is, you know, she's so much fun. And, and uh, we were doing this one scene where we had to, like, we were running past the kidnappers, so we had to sneak by. And then Amy did this thing of, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, do, do like the wheelbarrow. So she got down on her hands and she's like, <laughs> you know, hold my legs yeah, yeah, and yeah. run by. And I did this. She didn't have a lick of panties on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to see all that. She said it's the movie. There you go. There you go. Oh. Now, see what I did say? See what you, I did say that. We did say it. And then so did our attorneys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to taste this risotto? I would that, love to. That you made. There we go. Thank you. Let me know how we did. Mm. This this portion over here was just stirred perfectly. Thank you. So nicely Thank you, done. Mario. Thank you. I'm on my second bowl. <laughs> Should come as no Oh my surprise. god, it's delicious. What? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh wow. That is definitely worth that a half hour yummy. of stirring, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, have you ever, in this, in this um, movie, you play a tourist whose vacation mm -hmm. has kind of gone really wrong. Mm -hmm. Has that ever happened to you in real life? Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Look at your outfit. I was in France, right? And, okay, so I had to leave the next day. We were going out of Nice, so I was up the night before, mm -hmm. hanging out with my brother-in-law. We, we pretty much knocked off a bottle of vodka, right? <laughs> so I had to get up. Get to the train, I wake up, my wife is like, come on, good. I get to the train station. I'm just a mess, I'm still, maybe a little still tipsy. <laughs> she throws me on the train, I forget my, my purse, all I have is my passport and like 150 US dollars, yeah. right? no euros. So I get to the train, I fall asleep on the train, I was supposed to get off at Charles de Gaulle. I wake up, and I'm looking around, and the woman who was sitting next to me is a new woman, so I look at her. <laughs> And I said, I was like, uh, where, where are we? And I hear, do, 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 do. I was like, uh, Lil. I was like, Lil. I said, oh, this is not right. This is. So I get off the train, and I call my wife. I'm like, babe, where is Lil? She's like, you're almost in Belgium. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so I had to get back on the train and get back to Charles de Gaulle. And I, look, look, I have no money, no credit cards. I just have my passport. I'm, basically, I'm just a, a, a black, hungover woman <laughs> with no money. I, like, Wanda Sykes does not work in the U.S. <laughs> you are just a black woman who's drunk. <laughs> well, I'm glad it all worked out okay, it. boy. Wanda, it is always such a pleasure to have you here. Please come back anytime you're in town. Be sure to see Wanda and Snatch. It's in theaters this Friday. Up next, Carla and Mario are matching up their favorite foods. Don't go away. We put our next one in your hands on social media, and you spoke loud and clear for the winner. A fried green tomato and pimento cheese pizza. And who are we not to listen? The that's people will get what the people want, Carla. That's right. That's right. So uh, this started up, we did something else like this, a, sh a shrimp and grit souffle. Yes, which was amazing. And it was really delicious. And then we were thinking about what the heck else could we do? And this was born. I know. From social media. From social media. You guys are so smart. So uh, let's start with uh, the your level of the expertise. So the pimento cheese. So I have eight ounces of Jack, eight ounces of cheddar. I'm going to put in, I'm going to actually mix this, my pimentos, in with like two-thirds cup of mayo like this and then I'm going to add to just mix this up like this and there are different versions of this sometimes you can put in some 
cream cheese if you want. The mayonnaise. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Is mayonnaise always in pimento cheese? Um, mayonnaise, for the most part, yes. Is it? Okay. No wonder I like it so much. Yeah, I mean, mayonnaise and some <laughs> creamy stuff. Creamy uh, stuff. Just I mean, go to the grocer and ask for that. <laughs> uh, One of my favorite aisles. So, I know. I like the creamy aisle. All right. Shallots and garlic. All right. And then I'm going to put in a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper and then a couple teaspoons of hot sauce, your favorite hot sauce. And then I'm just going to mix that up and that is going to go onto our pizza. All right. So we have to... That's the cheese. That's the mozzarella, as exactly. it would be. All right. And then here we have a frying station, a dipping station. We have all-purpose flour with cayenne, salt, and pepper. This is right out of uh, Carla Hall's website, isn't it? Yes, right. <laughs> and do you season? Because I season this. I yeah, realize. Did I make a mistake? Every, you did not. Season right. every stage. Season every single stage. So season both the buttermilk as well as the... Uh, we're going to call this cornmeal today? Yeah. Because polenta would cost more? That's right. All right. So do I season these or I just dip? Um, season those a little bit too. Because this, you guys, basically, this is water. This is water. Let's season well, it. Well, it's green water shaped like a wheel, though, isn't it, Carla? I know. But the thing, I mean, when you think about seasoning, do you have to season it? Yes, because you want it to be delicious. Well, exactly. All right, so then I'm going to dredge them in this? Yeah, the I buttermilk. Guess, I guess there must be a shortage of buttermilk. Hmm. <laughs> The dang just, buttermilk just, cow is just not all, dead back there. spent all the money on the polenta. <laughs> right. I know. We just need enough buttermilk to put on the, onto the tomato to make the, uh, the cornmeal stick. All right. And then do you refrigerate these? Uh, just let them sit for a minute and, you can, and then so that, like the, these. Uh, corn, right, so that the cornmeal will stick when you go into the oil. All right. What kind of oil are we cooking these in? We're cooking those in canola. Don't splash me. I love my dress. I love I it, too. To. It also looks thin enough, though, that it might melt if it hits one dollop of this little oil, all right? Excellent. So we cook these until they're golden so brown. So those are golden brown. And you would traditionally serve these with pimento cheese on the side. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And in my head, you could even, like, put pimento cheese on the tomato and then batter that whole thing and fry it. But that's a whole other show. But that would be what? <laughs> All right, now back over to my level of expertise. We have pizza dough. This recipe is, of course, from Clinton Kelly's website. That is not true. <laughs> and uh, you just make it, or you can buy it in the store, and then what you want to do is just flip it out a little bit. You're gentle because pizza dough isn't necessarily always the one, although this one looks like oh, it can. I've always All right. Do no, do it again, Mario. Do it again. Throw it higher. 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 All right, one more. <laughs> Wow, these, so are, sexy. These, these are big tricks. That's sexy in it the is. South. That's crazy. In the same place they eat pimento cheese, it's sexy. Yes. I gotta move to the South. Oh. Oh. All right, okay, so now what are you doing? before they get this brown. Yeah, that's. I guess our oil was too hot. That's all right. I just I wanted to watch it and I was looking at the sexy. That's all right. All right, now make sure you get as much flour as you can on your Always do sexy with the black crust. Yeah. All right, then what we do is we're gonna take some of those, take some of these yeah. crusts. Uh, crushed San Marzano tomatoes. A lot of people are confused about what makes a really good pizza sauce. Really, all we do is we take crushed San Marzano tomatoes, add a little bit of salt, and just go like this. You don't even really have to puree it because I kind of like the texture of having a nice little bit of sweet tomato bite and crunch to it. Then we're going to take these uh, fried green tomatoes like so. Carla, do you put those on first in your mind, the cheese or no, the, the tomatoes? First. All right, so go right ahead. Okay. Like it, yeah, exactly. We're not gonna put a full like no. wash of it on, just like no. dollops, right? Yeah, so dollops. it's more. Like, this is kind of like gonna be like a little southern bruschetta, wouldn't you say? Yes, yeah, southern bruschetta. All right, I think that's enough. Do you think? Okay, one more. And then we take these fried green tomato pieces. Sometimes, sometimes in your mind you're thinking, is this gonna work? And I'm thinking, yes, it's gonna work. Harley, Harley's Harley. making southern hockey pucks over there. <laughs> <laughs> is it, is, is that the color they're supposed to be, That's Carla? Four. That's four. All right, five. so here's what you do. You heat up the pizza stone in your oven or just one of these great little cast iron pans. We're going to pop it in the oven and we're going to cook it until it's crisp, golden brown, delicious, yes. and bubbling just like so. It's your turn. Okay. What else? We'll see how our mashup comes together when we come back on the eating. All right. Enjoy that. to the two in honor of Request a Recipe Week. Carl and I are working on our groundbreaking, sensational mashup as asked for you guys on social media. So we made a fried green tomato and pimento cheese pizza. 
And so this is what we did. We made the pimento cheese, which you can make ahead of time, and you can use that pimento cheese that you know is in your fridge. So we dredged our um, our tomatoes in um, flour, buttermilk, and cornmeal, and we fried them at 325 degrees. Our oil was a little hot. It was at 375. That was too hot. And then we assembled the pizza, and we baked it at 425 degrees. And look at it. Mario is topping it with basil. Woo. And a little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. And what you'll notice is that if you give it the right incantation, the, the pieces of tomato that were separated yeah. come back together. Exactly. Right. exactly. It's the most amazing thing. Exactly. So the tomatoes are a little delicate, so you want to be careful when you cut them yeah, maybe to cut. Oh, no, no, don't use a knife. Just be wise and wily. <laughs> is this the first time or you guys are knife. trying this? Or? Yeah, the first time. This is the first time we've ever actually really done this, which is why it's actually a mashup. Let's give everyone a yeah. taste. What do you think? Okay. One. Bone. Give Simon the big piece because he's really Simon hungry. <laughs> I mean, like, I, you know, I always find these mashups, they're kind of fun and interesting and often delicious. Like, but in Italy, how would... Italy respond to oh, like something on. like this. Italy would have nothing to do with this. Not even one tiny bit. Right. right. Although but that doesn't make it bad or good. Tomato. A right. Green tomato wouldn't kick it. Mmm. Mmm, Carla. Right. This is actually a very good idea. Right. Isn't that good? Because it's still simple. There's not a million ingredients on it. It's still simple. It's exactly. Delicious. I mean, think about tomato soup that you would have with a grilled cheese sandwich. Yes, that's Which would be like pimento like. cheese and a tomato in there. I mean, come on. It's those come flavors, on. you're absolutely right. All right. All right, so now that we know your culinary selves combine so well, should we find out how your actual selves would mash up? I think we should. Okay. Oh boy. There you I are. I always need therapy with I'm you. not ready for this. Me neither. I have a mushroom. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> oh God. Carl and I are going to check into a hotel and make some babies right now. <laughs> I think we're actually going like to need someone. some time to think about that for a little while. Michael's making pierogies with an adorable grandma back <laughs> there with us. Like? Like it. it would be impossible for me to talk about my favorite food memories without mentioning the doughy deliciousness that is pierogi. <laughs> So naturally, I was thrilled to visit a local family-run restaurant centered around that famed dish and the baba who makes them so well. Take a look. Growing up in Cleveland, pierogies were a big staple of my family table as a kid. I learned how to make them from my pap, and today we are in Brooklyn, New York, where Helena learned how to make them from her baba, who is 88 years old and is going to show us how to make them today. Welcome to Baba's Pierogies. We specialize in handmade, made-to-order pierogies. And how'd you guys get started? Growing up watching Grandma make the pierogies, we always kind of fantasized about selling pierogies the way Grandma makes them. And then I met Bob, who's actually our chef, and we started making them out of our apartment. And Bob said, we need to like have more fun with this. And now we have the menu. And what kind of different flavors do you guys do? We do some traditional fillings, sauerkraut, potato, farmer's cheese. And then we do some non-traditional fillings like mac and cheese. We also do a chocolate and a blueberry pierogi. Now, I'm dying to see how to make these pierogies. Well, this is your dough recipe. So, she doesn't use measuring cups, you know, she just... So when we opened our first restaurant, we put pierogies on the menu, and we brought in my grandfather to teach us oh, all. Oh, that's amazing. Dough, and it was the same thing, no measuring. Yeah. What is this outfit? I love this outfit. It is called a kroi, the traditional dress from her village, which is in Slovakia in Central Europe. Oh, this is what she wore on her wedding day in Slovakia. Oh, my gosh. Why don't I get a babushka? <laughs> yeah. My grandfather is Ruthanian up in the Carpathian yeah. Mountains. Right, so that's where grandma's from, and they call themselves Rusin. Oh, yeah. I mean, and we, so we speak Korusnatska, we speak Rusnak. My great grandfather's last name was Bugovetsky. Did you know any Bugovetskys? <laughs> Michael, you want to get your hands in here? Yeah, I'll get it. I asked yeah. her, when do you know when to stop? Well, you know, this is a pro here, and she's saying, well, you just well, see it. You just see that it's done. Right. You know? So that's what we go with. <laughs> I like it. That, that's the best way. In your lifetime, how many pierogi have you made, you think? <laughs> Too much. Too much? <laughs> Very good. Next time you open store. <laughs> So what's next, filling? Yeah. You 
you've essentially created a whole restaurant after your after your grandmother. It's pretty overwhelming. How does it make grandma feel? I'm happy. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> after you boil them, do you brown them in butter? You kind of choose if you'd like them boiled or pan fried. I'm a pan fried. Yeah, Are you pan I'm a, fried I'm or a boiled? boiled? You're boiled. Check. What about grandma? No, I don't have a you. Well, and so boiled, but whatever happens to not get eaten, you put in the fridge, and then you fry them up the next, the next day for a day. snack. Oh, I wonder if as a child I kept getting <laughs> day-old pierogies. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, look, I got pierogi for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> they are perfect. You know what I love about this restaurant? Your family's here today, but you could feel the love that you put into the food. And you're sitting at a restaurant, but you're obviously getting food that comes from home. Cheers to you guys. Cheers. 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 Special, special family. Um, I'm going to turn the show into a little bit of a pierogi party when we come back. You guys don't want to go away. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Now I have turned the show into a pierogi palooza before the break. You saw me visit Baba's Pierogies, a great restaurant centered around the family's pierogi recipe. Now, they have showed you all kinds of fun things you could do with fillings. I'm going to show you some fun little toppings that we could do real quick, guys. So these are just their classic potato pierogi. To that, I have some uh, mushrooms and caramelized onions and a little fresh thyme. And again, when I was a kid, we ate them... We ate them, uh, my, my grandfather always browned them in a little bit of butter. So we just browned them in the butter here, and then I'm going to take the caramelized onions and the mushrooms, and I'm going to add that to the mix, and give these just a little toss. This Almost, is classic or innovative? No, this is, this is more innovative. This is okay. just having a little bit of fun. But that's kind of the beauty of a pierogi, is you could do so many fun things with it. Not much different than a ravioli, like right. you would do, MB. So then you drop them on a plate. And my grandfather, I like I liked the brown because I like the soft and the creamy. Yeah. And then I just have a little bit of blue cheese. Oh. Oh. You could put right on top, and then some fresh <laughs> chives. <laughs> Tell me what you guys think. <laughs> And then over there are some of their bacon, cheese, and potato pierogies, if you guys want to try those, with a little bit of sour cream on top. And because I know what MB likes to put on the bacon and everything, I got you a little hot sauce for yours. So should I have both? You should have yeah. both. Why not? Go big or go home, but well, say Or you can say and. Or hot. Or hot. Mm -hmm. It's so good. It's like a deliciously loaded baked potato. With yeah, they are so them. good. And I, I love the way that, that their dough is. I was telling Mario in between, it's so thin. My grandfather ro rolls them a little thicker. Both delicious, but these are really delicate. Mm. To uh, the Carpathian Mountains! I, so, both of these recipes from Baba's Programs could be found on thechew.com, so everybody could have deliciousness in their life. Thank you, pierogies tonight. That was, those are delicious. Super fun show today, and we are out of time. But thank you so much to the hilarious Wanda Sykes for stopping by. She's awesome. Come back tomorrow for an hour full of weeknight wows with Scandal's Darby Stanfield and the amazing Kevin Bacon. Go to the 2.com for even more things to end. Have a fabulous day, everybody.